If you follow us on Instagram, then you may have noticed that we took a road trip to New Mexico this week. Most of you were quick to assume that we are out scoping out a new property, which was correct. But this is not just another single family home to add to our portfolio, and it's definitely not a conventional deal. We're in the middle of our very first subject to transaction, and we've opened escrow on a property that so far we've called the castle. Subject to deals can sometimes completely fall apart at the last minute, so we're not calling this a done deal until we have keys in our hands, but it's also been a long road to even get to this point. So we thought we would take you along on the whole journey, starting back at the beginning. Last summer, we did our very first creative finance deal and we made a video about that. Maybe you've checked it out, but we bought a farmhouse in Iowa with an acreage using seller financing. After we did that first deal, it really clicked for us that we did not have to be confined to conventional mortgages to build our real estate portfolio. There were so many other different types of creative finance that we hadn't even tapped into yet. Right around the time of that creative finance deal, we stumbled upon Pace Morby's YouTube channel. And if you aren't familiar with Pace already, he's created this huge community, mostly focused around subject to transactions or referred to in short as sub two. With sub two, you essentially take ownership of the property and make the mortgage payments for the seller on their existing mortgage using their existing mortgage interest rate, which is typically much lower than if you were to go out and to get a conventional loan today. Most of the sub two deals that we're seeing have interest rates between two and a half and five and a half percent. This sounds too good to pass up. Pace has a huge content library on YouTube and then he also has like a private mentorship community but we started consuming a lot of information learning more and more about the process and we became really excited when we found out that Pace was a speaker at Rob Abasolo's HostCon conference that we attended a few months ago. That conference was at the end of October and there were a lot of great speakers that whole conference but we were excited to see Pace and hear what he had to say. That guy can really captivate a crowd. His speech was awesome and eye-opening to see, you know, him propose how he goes about finding sub two deals. And then we also had the opportunity in the VIP breakout room to sit around a table and just have an open dialogue and Q&A with him. And that was awesome. So between Pace's YouTube videos and his talk at HostCon and the VIP Q&A that we were able to go to, we knew that we really wanted to continue learning more about sub two and maybe even take part in some transactions ourselves. A few weeks after we got back from HostCon, I got a call from Rob and he started to tell me all about a new segment of his mentorship group called Host Camp. The new segment is called Creative Camp. So we learned that Creative Camp was going to be this community where members could network and also learn through speakers and live coaching sessions all about different creative finance options, including Sub2. But the biggest draw for us was that Rob had partnered up with Pace and Pace's deal finders from his sub two community were going to be funneling in off market deals for people in creative camp. The deal finders work a bit like wholesalers where they're doing outreach to sellers or agents to try and negotiate sub two or seller finance deal points. Then once they have an active lead and someone to agree to this, they take that deal and they assign it out to someone else. Creative Camp is unique because you have this pool of deal finders from Pace's group and then you have this pool of investors from Rob's group who want to purchase properties and it merges those two communities together. Stay tuned for the end of this video and we'll share how you you can get involved in Creative Camp with us, or you can go to arrivals.com slash creative. We always like to be learning and growing our business and trying new things. So the opportunity to jump into this Creative Camp was definitely a deal that we couldn't pass up. We joined Creative Camp and that started up in January. And we made a goal to find and close on a place using Creative Finance within the first three months of this year. And with the mentorship that this group provides and the number of deals funneling into the group on a daily basis, this goal seems seemed pretty easily achievable, but there still were a few days where we were feeling like we just weren't seeing yet what we wanted. That's not to say there was a lack of deals coming to the group. There were tons, new ones every day, spread all over the country, all different types of real estate. It was really eye-opening to see this deal flow. And we're also not saying they weren't good deals or wouldn't make great rental properties. It just kind of had this eye, I guess, where something just clicks and we know it's what we want. Well, I have pretty eclectic taste. 
But all of that changed about three weeks ago. I was out working on a property setup, which we're gonna be telling you all about next week. And Steven sends me a text with a link to this property. It looks like this big castle-y mansion. So I click on the link, I'm quickly scrolling through the photos, and honestly, I wasn't sold on the idea. It did look dated. It looked like a lot of the furniture would have to go, and it needed landscaping work, and we never thought of looking in New Mexico. Or buying a castle. But then I told you that we had data from the seller that it was grossing between ten and thirty thousand dollars per month and that was in its current state as a short-term rental and an event space we both kind of took a little closer look so we talked it over a little bit more became more and more intrigued the more we looked into it we reached out to rob that afternoon and just started asking him some more questions he connected us directly to the deal finder and we were just in question mode but what we didn't realize is at the same time someone else from creative camp was actively looking at this property as asking some questions and they assertively jumped on it and said, I want it. So that's one thing that we've learned so far. It's a pretty fast paced environment and we just need to be assertive and really say you want something right away if you are pretty convinced that you do. You never called dibs. Dibs were implied. One of the things that they do talk about in Creative Camp is getting really good at sort of comping out deals. And so you are able to look at a deal and quickly decide if it's something that you do want to jump on. This is definitely a fast paced game. And after a few days, of kind of waiting to see if this guy really was going to pull the trigger, we got word that he had opened escrow on our castle. And when we heard this, I was pretty bummed because after that kind of initial look, I spent the next few days, you know, doing more research, doing more in-depth market analysis about a property like this and became convinced that this is something they could do really well. We just kind of had the mentality, you know, guess it wasn't meant to be. I'm sure we'll find something better, but it did make us realize that we are looking for something unique. It kind of started to make sense. Like we were seeing this rapid deal flow of new deals and we hadn't really just had a spark of something that we thought we needed to do. And I guess it really came down to the fact that internally we were waiting for the one. Probably not just a single family home. Something a little different than, than typical homes. <laughs> I want something different, something unique. So with our bar now set to castle level, we continued to look at all the new deals that were coming into the Slack channel every day. And we did look into pursuing a couple other ones that came along that were interesting, but we did find ourselves always comparing it to the one that got away. But then a week ago, I got word that the first buyer might be backing out of the deal. He had been sharing this whole process on the Slack channel for Creative Camp, which is great. You know, you can hear from everyone and what they're doing. So he was sharing some details about his escrow process. So we we had been following along to everything that he had been sharing. He had done a ton of really creative due diligence. He got a hold of like a friend of a friend who's a police officer and asked him about the neighborhood. Turns out it's nice and safe in that pocket. He also reached out to a bunch of event planners who had held sort of micro weddings at the property and talked to them. And then he also shared his experience about flying to the property, doing the home inspection, and that's where things kind of ultimately turned around for him. We don't know him personally and we do plan to reach out to him. It's just been a lot <laughs> happening very, very quickly. From what we can understand, it seems like the biggest red flag for him was this big courtyard in the front of the house. The tiles there are in pretty rough shape. When we visited, we confirmed that as well. And it would be ultra expensive to tear out and replace all these tiles with similar decorative tiles. But this isn't the first time that we've had to get creative with renovation jobs. We sort of were thinking outside the box and we were able to come up with what we think is a great plan that's gonna give the property even more curb appeal and for a fraction of the cost of what the first potential buyer had planned on for that space. DIY? makes it so much easier. Once that buyer had made his decision that he wasn't gonna proceed with the deal, we jumped on it immediately and said, I'm in, I want it, let's lock it up. We'd been kind of kicking ourselves for the previous couple weeks about not being assertive and just jumping on it and kind of wishy-washy about what we really wanted or how we were gonna get the deal done. When it came available, we said, I'm in. Quickly told them we were in and then Steven spent a long time just scouring the inspection report and making sure that there weren't any major red flags, you know, aside from this tiled courtyard, you know, anything else that might have popped up during the inspection. And after all that, he didn't find anything that scared us away. The property isn't brand new. It's about 50 years old. So there's things, you know, that you're gonna expect with a 50 year old property, but by and large, everything was in passable shape. So after that, we sent in our earnest money deposit to get the contract assigned to us. And then we set up an LLC in New Mexico and started planning our trip to go visit the place. And all of this happened very quickly. We found out that the deal was back on 
done on a Saturday. We spent Sunday just trying to wrap our heads around how we were gonna make all of this work with timelines and stuff. On Monday, we submitted our earnest money deposit and started forming our LLC. And on Tuesday morning, we packed the car and started driving to New Mexico. So in the span of three days, we went from the mentality of no castle to being in the car on the way to the castle. We could have flown to New Mexico, it's a bit of a drive, but we already had a trip planned to Scottsdale to check on some things at our property there. So we spent one night there, then headed out the next day towards New Mexico. From Scottsdale, it's about a six hour drive and we thought we could get there in six hours, but it was a lot longer than that because we hit snow up in high elevation. Although the Tesla did do better in the snowy weather than we had thought it might. We got a little nervous, but we made it chug through. So we had one night in our hotel in New Mexico and then the next morning we went and visited the property. We got all the access codes and things from the seller. So we were able to have the place to ourselves, which was nice. And we really just kind of took some time to digest everything. And we spent about four hours there. Steven was checking over everything in his typical fashion, making sure that there weren't any unexpected maintenance issues and any other sort of surprises that weren't on the inspection, but also logistics for us. You know, how many cameras we're gonna have to have and door locks, cause it's old like castle doors and things. And then while he was doing that, I was just going going room by room, just really sitting down, looking at the space and just design planning. Because the next time we'll be there is in about three weeks and we really wanna hit the ground running with our setup plan to get the place back on the market and producing income as quickly as possible. Let's make some money, people. At this point, you're probably wondering two things if you've made it this far in the video. One, probably what are the deal points? And the other one, how do we get involved with Creative Camp and have deals served to us with mentorship along the way? This property had a purchase price of $950,000 with a $50,000 down payment, a $20,000 assignment fee for the deal, and then some expense for closing costs. So with all this, we're out of pocket about $90,000 to close the deal which to get into a property, an investment property with less than 10% down is gonna be unheard of at any traditional bank. Financing of that purchase price is handled in two different pieces. So you have the equity portion, which is about a third of the purchase price. And that portion is going to be seller financed to us at 0% interest, amortized over 36 years with a balloon at 10 years. And then the remaining amount is the mortgage that the seller has, and we'll pay this mortgage every month for the remainder of the 30 year term. And that's at five 5.775% interest. This is what they call a hybrid sub two deal where you have this seller equity portion and then a mortgage portion and you're making agreements to pay off both. The current owner, like we mentioned before, was grossing between 10,000 and 30,000 per month in its current state doing short-term rentals and micro weddings. So we think that we can only improve upon that number with improvements to the design and also the functionality of the space. And if you're interested in joining Creative Camp with us and other like-minded investors, we'll leave a link in the description below or go to arrivals.com slash creative. And we do want to say something more about Creative Camp. The mentorship is great and learning more about and getting more confident with, you know, sub two and other forms of creative finance. That's all great too. One of the things that we didn't really expect is just kind of the fire that it lit in us to go out and actually take action and get something done. We are extremely busy and it's so easy for us to say, we have so much going on already. Like, let's just push this off and do it in six months months or nine months or whatever. And then we kind of keep doing that because we're always busy. We're business owners, you know? But joining, you're in this group of like-minded people. There's deals coming at you and you just feel like- There's maybe just just enough competition, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's a little competition and some motivation to like make sure you're getting a deal that works for you. Then you do it. We've been super happy and great. Forced us to take action. Now we're in this project and we're gonna make it happen. Feel free to ask us any questions below either about, you know, our experience so far with this deal or about our experience with creative camp and let us know if you've done any creative finance transactions of your own how those went for you thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video